Uh, my name is Winford, Winford uh, Ellis Owen, and I'm uh, a specialist counselling consultant for Adelian Recovery. Before that, I was an actor, writer, producer, director for 40 years in a previous existence. And then when I was 58, I went back to college. And I did a degree and I started a new career when I was 60. And I set up the living room in Cardiff, which is a recovery centre, and now incorporated into Adelian Recovery. Uh, my addiction was to alcohol, um, but also to prescribed medicines. And codependency was a big, big issue for me. I wanted approval and uh, um, validation from other people. So I was a kind of mixture of everything, really. And that's why the living room has an all addiction approach to, uh, to recovery. Well, it was in Aberystwyth on the 20th of July 1992 that I kind of saw myself as I was, where the denial, which is a characteristic of addiction, of course it's one of the only conditions that, well no, schizophrenia is another one, that tells you there's nothing wrong with you. Um, but in Aberystwyth on that date, that's when I saw myself as I was, and uh, I'd run away from my responsibility as a husband, as a father, I was virtually unemployable. Uh, several things happened to me that night. I realised that everything is perfect exactly as it is. I realised I couldn't blame my long dead parents or my brother and sister or my wife or children. More importantly, I realised I couldn't blame myself. Um, I realised everything is perfect exactly as it is. And uh, my fear of death left me, funnily enough, and I believe addiction is a slow, drawn-out kind of suicide. I was trying to kill myself and all of a sudden, even though I was doing that, I was terrified of dying, but all of a sudden the fear of death left me. So I haven't had a drink since that night. But I did go back to the, um, attic, uh, to the attic, which I um, had escaped to. And I took the prescribed medicines like a smarties. And when I woke up the following day, I thought I had a stroke. I couldn't move my lips, I couldn't open my eyes, couldn't do anything. I've never been so frightened in my life. And the young woman who had given me a room in the attic came to see where I was, and she was, you know, she saw me in a dreadful state. She started rubbing water on my lips and so forth, got me sitting on the edge of a bed. And, eventually standing in the middle of the room and I had um, DTs that were shaking like the proverbial jelly from top to bottom. She was hanging onto both my hands like that and she was shaking as well. And that's when I asked for help. Just one word, help. And since then that has been answered one day at a time. But there was something else about this girl that was to shape the whole uh, the rest of my life. There was something different about her. I was used to people telling me off and shouting and what have you at my behaviour. But she had compassion in her eyes, far beyond her young years. And I knew then that that is the answer to addiction. And that really is what I was looking for. The human heart's desire to be left for itself. My trouble was I was looking for it in all the wrong places. But from then forward, I started looking for it where it really exists, which is inside myself. Stigma affected me in a big way. It prevented me from uh, asking for help. When I had already realized my need of help, it prevented me from reaching out. I first came looking for help in 1985, um, so you can see. Um, but I didn't because I was terrified of people's reaction if I admitted that I had a problem that people wouldn't want anything to do with me ever again. I'd never work again, you know, I'd be ostracized. And, and that idea of rejection was too much to contemplate because part of my addiction was that fear of rejection. And uh, it, it really kept me sick for many, many years. In the end, for me, you know, it's a small pond, Wales, I know, but it, within Wales, especially in the Welsh language community, I was very well known. I was doing uh, television programmes which were very successful and, uh, and people were getting to hear about my addiction. 
What's true about addiction is that we all try and keep it under wraps and so that nobody gets to see or hear about it, but it always becomes public knowledge and my addiction had become public knowledge. So I thought, well, if people know about my addiction, it's only fair, I suppose, that they know about my recovery as well. But it was a massive risk. I was terrified. I, I thought I would never work again. But of course, the opposite happened. Well, when I did eventually uh, talk about my addiction and admitted openly that I was an alcoholic and had other issues as well, the immense goodwill I experienced from people was, was phenomenal, phenomenal. And ever since I've experienced nothing but goodwill. In fact, it can be quite dangerous because they tend to elevate you and put you on. Uh, you know, they, they look up to you. And that for people like me is not particularly good. But the reaction was completely different to what I had uh, anticipated and what had kept me in my sickness for, for so long. I encourage people to try and speak openly about their addiction. I know many people who are in influential positions in Welsh government and so forth who could help so many people by just opening up and telling things as they were. I think really that that is the new ministry. It's, it's talking about where I've been and how recovery has helped me come out and emerge triumphant at the other end. And if I can do it, so can you. I think, you know, getting people to open up is a real challenge, but it is the only answer. They realized it with AIDS, you see. From the outset, we have to talk about it because the three rules that apply with addiction. One, nobody talks about it. Everybody knows it's there like a huge elephant in the middle of the room, but everybody walks on eggshells around it pretending it's not there. Nobody feels in the family where there's addiction. Man, why are you crying? I'm not crying, just got something in my, ear, in my eye. Dad, why are you angry? I'm not angry, boy, I'm not. You know, you're not allowed to feel. And you're not allowed to think either, because to think might be to think, hey, things aren't quite right here something needs to change. So we need to shatter those three rules, you know. Get people talking about it, get people talking about feelings, giving people permission to feel what they're feeling, to think what they're thinking. In fact, I believe that if you can get a person to accept the way he feels, accept the way he thinks, accept the way he is, what's and all, as Cromwell once said, you'll never ever have any problem with any addiction. His problem is that he wants to change the way he feels, he wants to change the way he thinks, he wants to change and be something he's not. That really is addiction. I believe recovery is so attractive. It's achievable uh, and it's available to everybody who wants it. I believe we should be shouting it from the rooftops. In fact, the founders of Alcoholics Anonymous, though it is anonymous, did say that that is what people should be doing, shouting it from the rooftops. Yes, you have to be anonymous at the level of press, radio and films, but it doesn't mean that we have to be anonymous at the level of family, friends and community. You know, yes, shout it from the rooftops. That's what I've done and that's what it many other people have done. And when you shatter that glass roof, then you get to experience what freedom is really like. What would I like to gain from, uh, well, you know, I, I am gaining every day I talk uh, to somebody and help somebody. It's, it's ironic, you know, that um, when you help somebody, it's not just the person you're helping that's benefit, benefiting, you also get to benefit from that and, and you grow spiritually and uh, in every other way as well. Um, I hope that more, more and more people will start opening up about their addiction. We're all on that continuum somewhere or other. You could argue that watching tennis on a Sunday afternoon is a form of stupefication. That's what addiction is. It stupefies us. 
from addressing some specific pain that we're running away from. Some of us do it to, to an extent where, which is harmful to ourselves and to our loved ones, but um, we're all recovering from something or other. We all of us at some stage or other need help. We all of us at some stage or other come to that crossroads. Um, and it's always preceded by some kind of suffering. Might be marital problems, might be financial problems, might be some life-threatening illness or what have you. And we need help. Well, please ask for that help because that help is forthcoming. It is there, but it has to come first of all from you. You have to reach out first. And don't let stigma prevent you from doing that because it's all in the mind. It really doesn't exist. The opposite exists. In fact, people will elevate you, look up to you for recognizing your need of help, for admitting that you're imperfect, for admitting that you're perfect. Me, I'm perfectly imperfect. So that's the freedom recovery gets you. Bless you all. Bless you all.